this vlog we're going to talk about something called QNOPs. Now you may or may not have come across something uh, like this. Um, the word QNOPs uh, sounds a bit like QROPs. Many of you may have a QROPs. But QNOPs is something quite different and I am delighted to welcome here today Mr. Andrew Dobson. He's from QB Partners, um, someone I rely on as an independent specialist in cross-border tax and estate planning. So when required, um, we would bring in someone like Andrew to uh, add specific expertise to holistic financial planning and cover things like, uh, as I say, estate planning, IHT, uh, legacy planning. Um, so to shed some light on the subject of QNOPs, first of all, I'm, I'm right in saying it's for um, British expats and UK domiciles. Now I want to cover perhaps UK domiciles in a later vlog because it's quite an in-depth thing. But first of all, the headline news, that, that's what we're talking about here for QNOPs, yeah? Uh, absolutely. QNOPs stands for Qualifying Non-UK Pension Schemes. It's set in the UK inheritance tax legislation and it specifically uh, takes overseas pension schemes and legislates for them in UK legislation for UK domicile individuals and it ensures that all contributions are outside of their estate mm -hmm. for inheritance tax purposes. Okay. So any contribution to a QNUPS for a UK individual will mm -hmm. not be subject to inheritance mm -hmm. tax when they pass away. So one of the main benefits, as I understand it, is that um, as opposed to a pension which is normally from employment related income, the QNUPS can actually absorb, if you like, that, perhaps a bad word, but you can inject non-employment income into this, so almost it's, from any source. It's from your personal wealth that's right. already taxed, you've accumulated that wealth, you've already paid tax on that wealth, but you're supplementing your other pension income. So you're effectively making contributions from your personal assets that are going to provide you with an income in retirement over mm -hmm. and above the existing pension provision that you've already made mm -hmm. to supplement a shortfall in your pension and your retirement requirements. Right, right. Um, I mean, one of the very interesting things that I know about QNOPs is that you can put property inside of it. So can you just elaborate? I know it's you know, people can't put family homes in there, Yeah. but exactly what type of property is allowed? So the, the investments that can um, be positioned within a QNOPS have to have diversification as a fundamental principle, because you're providing with retirement income. Mm -hmm. So you need to have assets that will grow, that will provide income in retirement, but also that are going to protect the capital by using diversification. So it's the normal principles of investment in, in pension funds that you will employ all the time. Right. But you have a broader investment um, potential and you can invest in greater, uh, well, wider range of assets than you may be able to mm -hmm. invest into in normal UK pension funds. Okay, so things like a buy-to-let property that you might have in the UK exactly. or... Um, I mean, I know a client who's got uh, garages that he rents out. Yeah, um, that sort of thing is that, that A, they're going to have a capital value that hopefully will grow. Mm -hmm. B, a buy to let is going to create a yield that that yield would, by definition, provide somebody with an income and that income could be used for retirement income. Mm -hmm. So if you invest that within a pension wrapper that benefits from the other in inheritance tax efficiencies, capital gains tax efficiencies, yeah. then that makes complete sense and it works. Yeah. You have to have diversification as a, as a, as a fundamental principle mm -hmm. as well. Though. Mm -hmm. So buy to let properties do stack up, they can be used. Um, it's relatively expensive to do, so it has to be for the right people in the right circumstances. Mm -hmm. But yeah, um, a buy to let property is perfectly okay. excellent. And Whatever you put inside this QNOPS, you're protecting, I touched on it at the beginning, you know, from IHT, so we're talking a potential 40% over and above the standard allowances. Correct. So, first principle with um, your uh, QNOPS contribution, it needs to be earmarked and uh, it needs to be the uh, first priority for it. it has to be to provide you mm -hmm. with your retirement income. Mm -hmm. Once that 
um, provision has been made, any surplus that is left behind, any residual fund, passes to the next generation or right. to the beneficiaries without inheritance tax being right. applied. Right. Without any tax, if they take income from the QNOPs depends, later on? Depends on the residency of the beneficiaries right. and the residency of the member when he dies. Mm. But in general, for an expat, there'd be no tax at all on the benefits when they're passed to the next generation. Wow. So, so saving of 40% inheritance tax. Yeah. So a buy to let property held in your own personal mm. name, mm. if it's passed to the next generation after you pass away, mm. that will be subject to 40% tax. Yeah. Over and above your mill rate band limits. Sure. If it's within a QNOPS, no tax. Yeah. So that yeah. makes a big difference. And it doesn't matter who that is. Uh, they can be like any type of family or whoever you wish to benefit, right? It, it follows the will or the... the Correct. Wishes. Correct. Um, Correct. And for things, it, you know, if you've got have a, to be a foreign spouse, spouse yeah. with yeah. an age difference or anything like that, they can get 100% if you, that's what you so wish. Correct. Yeah. Correct. Yeah. Absolutely. Okay. Well, um, you know, this is obviously a very fascinating subject and uh, very pertinent to a number of people. Uh, as I said at the beginning, definitely uh, Brits and um, UK domiciles and what I'd like to do is if you found this interesting if it's sort of you know sparked some interest uh, from you uh, get in touch with me you can make a comment uh, down below if you're watching this on YouTube and um, potentially what I'd like to arrange is a, a webinar uh, with Andrew and um, we could potentially get into this subject in more depth and um, you know, find out, uh, you can ask potentially some specific questions, you know, personal questions that uh, may well interest you and the others who uh, are watching. Hi, thanks for watching. And if I've said something of interest to you and you'd like to reach out to me and perhaps have an initial conversation or indeed arrange a meeting, uh, you can do that in a couple of ways. Uh, one is to Google me and type in Phil Morris Wealth Management and find me on LinkedIn or indeed reach out to me on WeChat and the QR code is coming up right now.